Hi, this is Mr. Merrill, and in this video we're going to talk about how to go from one way of writing a vector mathematically to another way. So here we're going to look at a vector where we're given a direction via an angle and a magnitude, and we're going to work to get it into component form. Remember, we have to get things into component form if we want to add, subtract, multiply, that type of thing. So, um, say you're given something like this, you're given an arbitrary uh, counterclockwise angle and a magnitude, and we can sketch what out, out what that looks like, and here's my sketch of the vector A. So the first thing you realize is I don't really know how to deal with angles like that, so we have to try to find our own interior smaller angle so it's something a little more familiar. So uh, there's no magic trick to this, you have to think every time you do it. Um, here I just decided to do this angle uh, between the negative x-axis and the vector. I could have done the angle between the vector and the negative y-axis. Um, but how do you go about solving that? Well, just think of the relationships you have. You know, between the two x-axes, it's 180 degrees, plus that angle has to equal the given 222. A little bit of algebra, a little bit of thinking about it, you should arrive at the correct answer. Do not just be blindingly, you know, subtracting 360 or adding 90 without any thought, you'll get it wrong, okay? So you have to think about uh, what angle am I actually trying to find and how can I relate that to the given angle. So once you have that, you can clean up the problem a little bit and it's a little more uh, familiar. Um, at this point, what you want to do is sketch out the components. So I should not have to think hard about this because the vector goes down and to the left. So the components are going to go down and to the left. So uh, you can see my sketch there, I just labeled them. Um, and the components are vectors themselves, they have magnitude and direction too, and component form relates that magnitude and direction to you. So what's the steps to get it into component form? Well, once you have these vectors sketched out, you want to think back to uh, um, this uh, little rearranging of the familiar trig functions and know that a hypotenuse times a sine can give you an opposite length. A hypotenuse times a cosine can give you an adjacent length. Well, the uh, x component is the adjacent side. So uh, this is my solving for a sub x, 12 newtons times cosine of 42 degrees, and I get this number. Uh, the y component is the opposite side, so that's telling me to use sine. My calculator gives me this number. You're not done. Because the final step to actually take these numbers and get them into component form is I have to think of, do I need a positive or do I need a negative in front of each of these directions? And you're only going to get that is if you sketch out the components. I see my components go to the left, so the x component is negative, and down, so the y component is negative. So um, it's a rather easy process once you practice it, but it's basically just uh, drawing it out and then using these and then finally remembering whether you need a positive or a negative sign. All right, hopefully that helped.